Welcome to another Art History Podcast. What is a sacred space? It's a place that has significant religious meaning to the people who visit or worship there. Our contemporary churches, synagogues, and temples are not unique in the history of art. In fact, the earliest images created by people more than 30,000 years ago were made in Ice Age Europe, and scholars agree that these caves were used in ritual and ceremony, not for everyday living. The tradition of decorating caves in subterranean spaces is still found in parts of the world today. This is the interior of a kiva, a sunken room accessible by way of a roof hole in an ancient underground ceremonial chamber. This is the first human constructed holy place. Predating Stonehenge by more than 6,000 years, Turkey's stunning Gobekli Tepe changes our previous understanding of the rise of civilization. Stonehenge stands on the Salisbury Plain in southern England. It's not a single structure, but consists of a series of earth, timber, and stone structures, which were revised and remodeled over a period of more than 2,000 years. Why was this location selected for this great structure? Did a significant event occur here, or was it simply a convenient site for the people who lived in the region? Scholars agree that the structure aligns with the sun on the summer solstice. The term temple comes from the Latin and refers to a Roman structure reserved for religious or spiritual activities such as prayer and sacrifice. The term also became associated with the dwelling places of a god or gods. Many ancient people believed that the gods lived at the tops of mountains, which were closer to the heavens. In ancient Samaria, the land was flat, so they built human-constructed mountains for their temples. Today, most religious buildings are intended for congregational worship, where groups of people gather to celebrate their god, reaffirm their faith, and receive spiritual comfort. Ancient Greek temples were rarely used this way. They were meant to serve as homes for the individual god or goddess who protected and sustained the community. The god or goddess was represented by a cult image, usually a seated or standing statue, which occupied the central place in the temple. The most important architectural innovation of the Greeks was the external colonnade emerging in the 7th century BC. It formed a sort of curtain around the temple, solid but transparent, screening the sanctuary and the cult image from the outside world. Like Greek temples, Roman temples housed a cult statue, but that they did not usually sit on hillsides. Romans constructed temples in the middle of the city, but elevated them on high platforms. The temples emphasized the front of the building, which consisted of a porch with columns called the pruneos. Public religious ceremonies took place outdoors and not within the temple building. Some ceremonies were processions that started or ended with the temple where a ritual object might be stored and brought out for use, or where an offering could be deposited. Solomon's Temple, also known as the First Temple, was the temple in Jerusalem on Mount Zion before its destruction by Nebuchadnezzar II after the siege of Jerusalem around the 5th century BC. As we can see from the plan, the layout is similar to Greek and Roman temples, but its use was different. By Greek and Roman times, synagogues were a place for Jews to read, study, teach the Hebrew scriptures, and law. It also served as a sort of community center for hosting social functions, debating political matters, settling disputes, housing temporary travelers, and storing and distributing charity. Religious services included psalm singing, readings, prayers, and a sermon. The form of synagogue is conditioned by function the volume compact and often rectangular, the entrance, usually on the west side of the building, leading to the main hall for men and premises for the women. In the center of the men's hall, a platform is constructed. This bima is designed for Torah readings, and the holy book is kept in a bay or cupboard in the eastern wall facing Jerusalem. Since Christianity evolved from Judaism, congregational gatherings are quite similar. 
Roman temples were not designed for group worship, so as Christians needed places to worship, they adapted the Roman meeting hall or basilica. These rectangular buildings had a raised speaker platform in a rounded recess called an apse. This was also an appropriate place for a priest or speaker. Early Christians did not sit in pews, but stood or kneeled throughout the ceremonies. As Christendom grew and spread, churches also grew in size and complexity. They were often adorned with stained glass and sculpture to help worshipers visualize and understand the Bible stories, but the main function of the church remained the same. As long as there was a place to gather and a speaker's place for the altar and the priest, the rites and the services could be celebrated. The third Abrahamic faith, Islam, requires many of the same elements as Judaism and Christianity. A large gathering space or prayer hall is most important. Just as Christian churches were traditionally oriented towards Rome, Muslims aligned their mosque towards Mecca, a holy place in Saudi Arabia. They mark that direction by building a niche in the wall called a mirab. This provides a focal point for worshipers to kneel and pray. This image of a mosque in Egypt displays the characteristic domes we associate with Islamic structures. It also has tall towers called minarets. They were designed for the muezzin to call believers to prayer five times each day. Many Hindu temples are located in key geographical points, such as a hilltop near a waterfall cave or river, because some believe that the Puranas mention that the gods always play where the groves are near rivers, mountains, and springs. A characteristic of most Hindu temples is the presence of murtis, images of the Hindu deity to whom the temple is dedicated. Hindus believe everything is God and contains the divine energy of God, so everything is worthy of worship, be it the murti, an icon, or nature itself. In northern India, the temple complex includes a garbhagriha, or inner sanctum, where the image is housed. The sanctum is crowned by a tower-like shikara, which is beehive or curvilinear shaped. Influenced by Buddhism and brought to life in 950 AD, this temple is rich in marvelous carvings that are a blend of ancient and modern art. Its eastern front has a massive well where it's believed that taking a dip cures infertility. Every Japanese municipality has at least one temple, while large cultural centers like Kyoto have several thousand. Temples store and display sacred Buddhist objects. Some temples used to be monasteries and some still function as such. Structures typically found at Japanese temples are a kondo or main hall where sacred objects of worship such as statues are displayed. A kodo or lecture hall is used for meetings and lectures and may also display objects of worship. The pagoda usually comes with three or five stories. Pagodas store relics of the Buddha, usually in the form of a representation. Gates mark the entrance to the temple grounds. There's usually one main gate and possibly several additional gates along the temple's main approach. On New Year's Eve, Bancho or temple bells are rung 108 times, corresponding to the Buddhist concept of 108 worldly desires. We will, we will be revisiting several of these structures as we move through the course this year. As you complete your homework assignment, consider not just the appearance, but the symbolism and the use of the sacred space you choose to explore. <music>